What's up, everybody? Hi, guys. It's Kevin Kreider. More than just <clears throat> muscle! <laughs> so I'm here in Miami. I'm here with my buddy Parker. We're going to a training facility called Budokan. Do you want to tell us what Budokan is a little bit? Sure. Um, Budokan is mixed movement arts. So it's yoga, martial arts, and calisthenics. Um, really reached out to Parker because I'm kind of in a rut, to tell you the truth, guys. I have been weight training for a while. I've been getting some great results, but like the law of familiarity, you start to take things for granted once you keep seeing it every day. I've just really been taking everything for granted. I've been eating like crap and I've been feeling like crap. And that's the good point, right? So even though I look all right and I'm still fit, to me, it's about feeling good too at the same time. And now it's at that point where looking good is a byproduct of that. I wanted to do a video because I just wanted to share that I'm going to Miami. I'm going to go down there and see my buddy Parker. And I got to tell you, I know it's a very vain and beauty driven city. And I feel like crap. And I also feel the worst <laughs> from eating crap. I know I look awesome, but I feel my worst. And that's the dumbest part about all of this is that it's almost like I don't even care about the way I look anymore. I do, don't get me wrong, but it's like I care about more the way I feel because I could keep eating like this and looking better, like just like I do, but the thing is I really care about the way I feel and that is more than just muscle. And I don't wanna feel like this anymore because I'm gonna show up to my clients, to my coaching clients and to you and to be able to bring the best, the best energy and the best foot forward and I don't want something like food holding me back. Tell us the philosophy of a human hero. Human hero to me is, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect, Kevin's not perfect, no one is perfect. We are all flawed, we are all imperfect, and once you start to understand and embrace that, it really opens you up to the possibilities of having a donut every once in a while, or having a burger if you're a meat eater. Well, I'm currently a pescatarian and I feel better than ever. My energy levels are higher than ever. Um, and when I say my energy levels, I just mean not just my ability to train physically, but just how I interact with the world around me, how I interact with other people. And it, it, it has a springboard effect. So the more conscious I am about what I put in my body, the more conscious I am about what I do with my body, the more conscious I am about where I put my body, the more conscious I am about who I interact with. Um, so it all, it's a big cyclical moving circle. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that circle idea. Uh, but really, that's in the beginning, I'm not gonna lie. I just ate and trained purely for aesthetics. And I still train for aesthetics, but eating definitely was a big thing for me. Um, I would eat very poorly in the past. I used to scold at Parker because he would have a cookie. And I should, all, I should tell you guys, Kevin was my first trainer. He was my first teacher. I've been a movement teacher for over a decade now and this guy started me on it. This guy inspired me. I basically came to Philadelphia this like, I didn't know what I was. Like I was really, really, I had long hair. I was, I, I mean, I still, still paint my nails sometimes, but <laughs> had no idea about how to train my body. And he taught me and I'm super grateful for that. Parker's now taking it to the next level because I, for a while, we both just trained for aesthetics and yes. we separated for a little bit when it came to fitness. And I've come to this realization in this point in my life where I realize it has to be more than just aesthetics. It has to be more than just gaining muscle, hence why I do more than just muscle all the time. And then I started talking to Parker and he, lo and behold, shares similar beliefs and he created this human hero which i find really fascinating human hero is still in development for me and human hero i believe will always be in development because i'm always going to be in development and i would like to believe that every human being out there is always going to be in development the human hero is this constant engagement between the human which we all are and the hero the heroic voice that i believe we all have inside of us and when the human falls, when the human fails, when the human doesn't want to get out of bed and wants to eat cereal all night, every night, the hero has to step in and say, hey, like, get it together. You're better than this. Let's do some work and move. And I think that movement is the really the gateway to tapping into all those different forms of change in your life. Movement happens first because when you move, you feel something, literally. Your heart starts to beat. 
your blood moves faster throughout your veins, your body is doing things, it's creating energy. I've been clinically diagnosed with depression and anxiety um, by doctors, by multiple doctors. According to some people, yeah, I, I'm, I have depression and I have anxiety, but that can mean a lot of different things to me. It, mean, it can mean that I have to take a bunch of medicine to make me happy, or it can mean that I have to do other things to make me happy. So happiness is something that it, it's, it comes and it goes, it's, it's moments, it's, it's, it's not something that can be grabbed and held onto forever. It's a search, just like the journey, just like the life journey. Did you hear that, girls and boys? <laughs> it's a life journey. I think it's important to be better than, than who you were yesterday. And it goes into a quote that really hits me and inspires me a lot, and that was by Theodore Roosevelt, one of our presidents, and he said that comparison is the thief of joy. Parker might not know this, but when we were training together and, you know, he got all these girls coming in all the time and all of a sudden he's hot shit, he's up there, we're both modeling up in New York. I, it was very easy for me to compare myself to him and his, his success. And it took me a while to realize that's his journey and it's gonna be different and we're two different people. You know, the choices we made, the lives we did, it's unfair to compare each other to the accomplishments or the people we are. So that is something that was a lifelong lesson for me and it helped me to not compare myself to other people because it was just a, it's, it's a personal experience. I'm not gonna lie, it can still happen, but I can easily just snap out of it a lot quicker and not waste my time in just sulking in the comparison, feeling hopeless and everything. I agree that I think comparing your journey to the journey of others distracts you from your journey. It pulls you out of the present and and how do you even know that if you had this this life of somebody else that you're comparing yourself to, how do you know that would make you happy? When you break it down, this is similar to Human Hero as well, or kind of the core of Human Hero, is that we're two people. We're like the person that we were born to be, that we that we know that we are inside, that sometimes we forget, that we often forget. And then there's the person that the world wants us to be and that we put on this mask and interact with the world in a very specific way because we want the world to like us. And that's the human. That The human wants to be loved, wants to be acknowledged, wants to fit in, wants to own a Ferrari and drive around in, in Miami and live this luxurious lifestyle because other people do not even because they or for i'm gonna just gonna speak for myself not even because i really do and speaking for myself that's not what i want my goal really is to bring human hero to light you know the outside sources of making us feel better like medication or other outside substances or anything like that to make yourself feel better about yourself really doesn't come from other stuff because it can actually make you end up feeling worse. At least that's what I've experienced. And well, movement, movement is something that you can control. Like there's mornings where I wake up and I don't want to get out of bed. I feel like shit and I really have no reason to feel like shit. And that's when I do not accept, but acknowledge the fact that Maybe there is a chemical imbalance in my brain. So on those moments, or during those moments, when I'm like, ugh, like, the, really it feels like hopelessness. And the quickest way to get out of that headspace is to move. And you have control over that. Get up and do some push-ups. Get up and go for a run. Um, go take a class. And that really, movement is the key to action, for sure. Anyway, see you in a little <laughs> bit. We're going to Budokan, and it's not the restaurant. Not to kick Kevin's ass.
post-workout meal. What do you get? I'm getting quinoa, arugula, almond, cherry tomatoes, avocado, red peppers, and lifting dressing, whatever that is, from these two very beautiful ladies. I want to get. Oh wait, they're burritos, right? All right, I'm gonna get a burrito. Hope that helped. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you guys soon.